welcome to Azor, the Lawbringer. As far as opening hand goes, yeah, I love it. We got some good stuff in the hand. We have Serum Visions, we have Remand, uh, we have some good protection and Swift Foot Boots. We got three lands, definitely keep on this one. And we're playing against Garza Zol, which I just, um, <laughs> I don't know, I just I love the art on this card. It is so... So absolutely very interesting. Let's see if our opponent wants to mulligan past seven or not, and then we'll get this game going. <laughs> okay, opponent will keep on this one. Let's go and lead off with, um, actually, we can go for Port Town if you want to. Yeah, let's go and do that. Let's get down Port Town. Uh, we'll go and reveal planes off of this one. Let's go ahead and go for Serum Visions. Uh, that we can dig a little bit deeper into our library. Entreat the Angels and Fumigate. Um, let's do this. Let's go and put... Um, I do like having access to a board wipe, so let's go and put Entreat the Angels on the bottom of our library, and let's go and put Fumigate on top, and then anything else, we're going to go and pass the turn to our opponent. We are playing Azor, the Lawbringer, the strong arm. <laughs> uh, flying whenever Zor enters the battlefield, each opponent can't cast instant or sorcery spells during that player's next turn, and then whenever Zor attacks, you may pay Sphinx Revelation if you do. You gain X life and you draw X cards. So uh, basically, there's a lawyer here in the Dallas area, or at least in Texas, that um, <laughs> it's Jim Adler. He's the strong arm, and he just yells a bunch, and it's just it's a very interesting commercial. Whenever I think about Azor, the uh, the band hammer, I always think about that commercial. Um, I like leaving up remand on this one. Anything else? Yeah, let's go and pass the turn. Our opponent did look at our hand with Cataxium Pro, but if they want to get something down on turn two, like a Mana Rock, I really like going for remand to get some pretty good card draw going. And then I'll uh, cover Garza Zol in just a second. Plus, let's go for Sky Diamond. Let's go and go for remand on that one. Do a little bit of setback. Drawn to Counterspell, okay. And they do not know about Counterspell, so we can actually go for Counterspell off that Mana Rock, which I like going for that. Um, let's go ahead and get down Colonnade, and then anything else, we're going to go and pass the turn to our opponent. Playing gets Garza Zol, Plague Queen, flying in haste. Uh, whenever a creature deals, uh, whenever a creature dealt damage by Garza Zol um, dies, put a plus one count on it. Yeah, let's go ahead and go for Counterspell. I like that. Uh, we're going to get ahead on mana. We're going to hit on land drops. We're going to make sure our opponent's going to keep away from Garza um, as quickly as possible. And hopefully we can just dig a little bit deeper into some other sort of answer. I was going to get planes down. Uh, we could tap out for Tygam if we want to. Let's just do some setting up this turn. Let's go for Mindstone and let's go and tap out for Swiftfoot Boots. I like going for that. Get that down, and then anything else, we're going to go and pass the turn. Uh, but yes, we're playing against Garza. Uh, whenever a creature dealt damage by Garza dies, put a plus one counter on Garza. Then whenever Garza Zill deals combat damage to a player, you may draw a card. It's been a long time since I played against her. Like I mentioned, uh, she does have some very... <laughs> Just very interesting art. I, I love that they, I don't know, it just looks like a, a very, very old magic. I don't know, it's just a lot to take in. It's just got the, the light blue background. There's just not a whole lot of action going on. I just, yeah, it's very interesting. All right, so I'm just going to get a charge counter on Coalition Relic and uh, draw into Supreme Verdict. I'll take that. Uh, it's going to get down planes. That's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. And now that does leave us open on Azor the Lawbringer. Do we want to tap out for Azor? They can't cast instant or sorceries. Yeah, let's go ahead and go for that. I think I'm okay. Yeah, let's do that. If they have some sort of spot removal, they'll use it. If not, we can get down tie game and kind of go from there. Uh, tap out on Port Town. They can't cast instant or sorcery and then anything else. We're going to go and kick the turn over to our opponent. Now, one versus one commander. There's been a huge... Um, unbannings basically and if you didn't see the video this past saturday if you want to check it out it's in my video feed i released it on saturday but basically they're hitting the reset button on one versus one commander and they're unbanning a lot of cards that they banned over the course of a year so a lot of stuff like um not ever flowing chalice <laughs> i was thinking ever flowing chalice in my hand uh, stuff like soul ring mana crypt a lot of that fast mana that they banned initially with one versus one which i that's about the only part of the unbanning that i don't necessarily I mean, I'm going to be playing the cards. I just, I think maybe Commander 1 versus 1 would be better without stuff like Soul Ring and Mana Crypt, but they've been unbanned. So if that's something that's kept you from playing 1 versus 1 Commander, um, they're definitely going to be unbanned on, um, what is it? It's going to be July 25th. That'll be when the update goes into effect. All right, do we want to swing in with the Azor? So let's say we go for Swift Foot Boots. We definitely want to protect Azor. Swift Foot Boots swing in. That'll put us at um, drawing two cards. Yeah, I think we're okay with that one. Let's go and get boots onto... Um, <laughs> it'll help if we go to our main phase. There we go. Let's get Swiftfoot boots onto Azor. Tap out for Mind Stone. And then let's go and push in for two. Yeah, we could leave up Factor Fiction, but I like going for this one. We get a little bit of incremental value on this one. Yes, yeah, so we're going to use that ability. 
All right, so we're drawn to Comeuppance and we're drawn to Island. Um, let's see, did we make the land drop for the turn? No, we did not. Let's go to get down Island and then we're going to go and pass the turn to our opponent. Now, they did unban some of the fast mana. Another thing that they did unban is a lot of the uh, the tutors that they banned, the one drop tutors, stuff like Mystical Tutor, Enlightened Tutor, Worldly Tutor. Um, they unbanned those really quick in hopes to kind of like slow down the one versus one format, but. Um, I never really agreed with those. You know, it, some of those cards maybe you could ban, but I feel like what ended up happening with one versus one commander over the course of a year is they just ended up kind of building this um, this format that was just really watered down. So I'm just really glad that we've gotten to the point now where they're unbanning some of this stuff and basically just kind of hitting the reset button and then kind of going from there. All right, Poto's going to be swinging in with Garza. Uh, that will be a... Uh, yeah, combat damage, we'll be able to draw a card, and then hopefully we'll be able to draw into some sort of spot removal. We want to keep her off the battlefield. Opponent's only looking at Coalition Relic at this point right now as far as any sort of mana source, so some sort of spot removal would be absolutely wonderful at this point right now. Okay, draw into City of Brass. Um, let's go and get that down. Now, we can tap out for a pretty good chunk of mana if we wanted to. That allows us to go for another Sphinx Revelation, or we could try to Factor Fiction for another piece of removal. Let's do this. Let's go and push in with the Zor. That'll allow us to at least get some more commander damage going. and put it up to 12 total commander damage. And yeah, I think I like leaving up Factor Fiction on this one. We want to deal with the Garza off the battlefield. All right, put them down to 15. That's 12 total commander damage. It's going to go for Factor Fiction. It's going to be 1, 2. And that will leave Island, Sword of Feast and Fame, and Disallow, Jace, and Force of Will. So let's see how our opponent wants to split this pile up. Okay, opponent's going to go Island, Force of Will, and Sword of Feast and Famine. Um, on this one, let's go ahead and go for Disallow and Jace. I really like this option, so we're going to go and choose Pile 2 on this one. I mean, if we wanted to have Force of Will, we could, but uh, I kind of like the boards that we have developed, so let's go ahead and choose Pile 2 to put into our hands, and the rest will go into the graveyard. And then anything else, let's go and kick the turn over to our opponent. Now, we do have Comeuppance in the hand, so prevent all damage that would be dealt to you and Planeswalkers you control, and then uh, it's going to deal that much damage to that creature. So long story short, we can at least fog out Garza uh, from getting a card draw and kind of basically kind of tax them into recasting Garza or going for something else like that. Now, with us having Disallow, that does keep us open to kind of protect protect Azor, or at least at the, uh, the very minimum, um, getting down Jace and keeping Jace protected. Opponent's going to go for Liliana of the Dark Realms. Okay. Um, plus one search. Yeah, that's okay. I think that's okay. I like leaving up comeuppance on this one. Okay, let's see if our opponent's going to swing in. And some of the other cards that they did unban, um, they actually unban, oh, and actually partners. I need to talk about partners. Let's go and go for comeuppance on this one. That's going to be white, colorless, and then one off Mind Stone. Let's go for comeuppance. All right, so Garza's going to be swinging across. She's going to hit herself in the head on accident with her stick or her staff or her snake staff, and then uh, let's see if they want to recast. They're actually not going to be able to recast that because it's going to put them down to only about five mana. So that does leave us open for going for So I don't know. I just really love thinking about her tripping and hitting her in the head with her own little staff thing over there. I'm just going to go for Tezzer at the Schemer, okay? And with Tezzer, that's going to be a plus one, get that artifact token, and the minus two, which is not too bad. We have uh, Zor protected at this point right now, so... I think we're going to be okay with that one. And they're going to go ahead and put a charge counter on Coalition Relic. Now, one of the big things they did do in this update is they banned partners, and I'll kind of talk about that here in a second. But um, the actual cards themselves aren't banned. Uh, you basically just can't have a partner commander deck anymore, which is kind of interesting. Didn't really see that one coming. But let's go ahead and get back into the game state. So we have Jason Mind Sculptor, we have Supreme Will. We're going to go and push in with the Zor, the Lawbringer. That'll push it an, a clock next turn. We have Supreme Will and Disallow to kind of protect the Zor. Yeah, I like that. Let's go and push him with Azor. And we're going to go and push past on um, Liliana. And yeah, I like doing that. Let's just go and swing in our opponent. That puts it at 18 total commander damage. And we're not going to tap out for a Sphinx Rev because I like having access to whatever we have in the hand. Um, we need at least six mana. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, that's fine. I'm not going to pay for Azor's uh, Sphinx Revelation. Swing across for six, put them down to 18, and put them down to nine total life, and then anything else. Now we're going to go and pass the turn. Yeah, so long story short, they banned uh, partners. You can't have two partners be your commander. And one of the main reasons for that is they said that a lot of the... Um, our opponent's going to scoop it up. We have commander damage coming across on the back end, but I'll go and explain what I was talking about. Um, they, on the, As far as the partners go, they, uh, they banned partners because they basically said the... 
if you have a partner, it's like you're starting off with an extra card in your hand. And as far as their data goes, as far as Commander 1 versus 1 leagues and stuff like that, um, a lot of these partner decks are basically just kind of turning into four-color, like, legacy-style decks, which is nothing wrong with that. You can definitely play that in Commander. But as far as them trying to promote some sort of healthy meta game to where it actually kind of captures the spirit of Commander in some form or fashion a lot of the partner decks just didn't really capture that ability. So, unfortunately, I did, that's, uh, it does cut us out on the Soul Tide deck that I did have, a Cadell and Rayhan, which is a lot of fun to pilot. So I'll have to find a new commander for that one. But they also did unban Vile Smasher. So if you're a fan of Vile Smasher, um, you can still play the partners as a single commander. You just can't have an extra partner in the command zone. But that's going to be it for the video. And in fact, if you enjoyed it, like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye.